Welcome back, Razbam Strikeo fans. I'm Nato, and today we're back for part three of the UFC series of tutorials going through the upfront controller for the Strike Eagle. If you remember back in part one, we talked about a basic overview of the upfront controller, the button layout, and all the different various submenus uh, as a basic overview. Part two was the radios, how we talked about setting up the freaks and going into the submenu to uh, manipulate some different programming functions. Today we're going to specifically talk about the steer points uh, as well as the uh, UFC steer point submenu that where you can go in and uh, manipulate and edit uh, steer points. But before we get into that, I just want to give a quick overview of the steer points and the navigation setup uh, because it gives you a little bit better context for what I'm going to talk about uh, when we get into the submenu. So if you look over here on the uh, TSD or tactical situation display, essentially the moving map. Uh, let me give you a quick overview of what the route looks like uh, in terms of the navigation and how the steer points are, are uh, described or labeled. Uh, so right now I've got a route that's uh, set up for uh, six points. Uh, two of these are targets, so a normal circle is just a basic steer point. A square is an initial point or IP, and a triangle is, uh, denotes a target. Uh, also for the targets, note that they're uh, labeled as a, a point or a number with a point. And that's how it specifically identifies the target itself. So that's how you tell the system that I want this target to be, or this point to be a target. And then that uh, is specifically will then tell the bombing computer that, hey, treat this point differently. This is where I'm going to get all my uh, weapon steering to and all my uh, computations for bombing solutions, whatnot. Uh, and then just a normal point is, uh, is, is labeled. The IPs are, are a little weird in terms of, uh, they basically act as a normal steer point, but they show up uh, on the TSD only as a, as a square. Just so visually you can say, hey, the next point coming up is, uh, is the IP uh, in anticipation of getting to the target. So that's kind of how that goes in terms of the route itself. And then the final point on there is, uh, this is called the base point. This is where you're aligning your INS2 on the ground. So uh, it, also gives you navigation back to the airfield. It's not to the center of the airfield itself, but it's the specific parking spot of where you actually align the INS to uh, when you start it up. In DCS, a little weird, uh, it will also give you a base point to wherever you spawned into the game. So that's a little bit of a, a, a gameism. Obviously, the real airplane would not do that. You can't have a, a base point out in space somewhere because obviously if you tried to align your INS to that, the airplane would be all uh, kinds of wonky screwed up. So that's, that's the overview of the, of the route itself, and that gives you some context in, in terms of how the steer points are labeled. So if you go here, again, we're on menu one of the UFC, and push button 10, if you remember, it goes one through five, and then six through 10 uh, up on the uh, UFC. So right here is the main top level steer point uh, manipulation. So if you notice right now, we are steering to steer point one, it's actually one alpha of the route. There's actually three routes, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. But right now, obviously, we're just going to stick with, uh, with the alpha route. So currently, we're steering to one alpha. And you can also see out here in the HUD, if it's within the field of view, the steer point will show up as just a circle on the ground to, to visually give you an indication of where that steer point is. So on the UFC, this is how we change our steering to go to different points. So if I want to go to uh, steer point two, which is an IP, again, it's just labeled two, so I can enter two in the scratch pad and enter that, and then notice the steering itself will change, and then the little uh, point will jump out here. Again, if it's within the field of view, then uh, it will show up in the, um, uh, in the HUD. And then if I want to steer to the target, to the first target, it's important now that I use this three point or three decimal, so I type in three point, and then I enter that into the UFC and then notice that steering jumps over there, and I can see that in the HUD. And then notice uh, it stays a circle if I'm in anything other than air-to-ground master mode. So if I'm in air-to-air -air or um, uh, nav steering or whatever, it's just going to show up as a, a normal steer point. It will still save three point in the in the HUD. And again, if I if I change over to nav master mode, I'll get a little bit more data in here on the um, uh, on the HUD in terms of the distance. The, the steering point and so on. I'm not going to get it into any of the air to ground yet. Uh, that's for a future date. So I'll, I'll talk about that. But if I were to go into air to ground master mode, that would actually show up as diamond to denote that that is a, um, 
uh, a target that I'm actively steering to and that, that diamond will give you active weapon steering. Again, I'm not going to go into that right now. I might show you that here at the very end. So let's go back to steer point one and then uh, we'll go into that. So let's go into the steer point submenu itself. So again, as long as the scratch pad itself is empty, it will allow me to go into the steer point uh, submenu. If there's something in the scratch pad, it's going to try to enter whatever that whatever that point is. So the empty scratch pad is the key to be able to get into the, the individual submenus. So right now, notice I'm in steer point one submenu. So this is giving me the data on this point. So I can see the lat long, I can see the elevation of that point and so on. And uh, this, is, this is how you would then go in and manipulate it. So let's say I wanted to edit the point. Uh, if I wanted to change the point, uh, the, the lat longs, if I wanted to move that point to somewhere else, uh, I could do that. However, this is a really big uh, issue um, that you need to remember is you cannot edit and actively steer two points. So notice I'm steering to steer one. And if I were to try to type in the, the point, let's say I wanted to change the coordinates. So if you remember from the previous one, you have to, if I want like a north or an east or a west, I would have to use the shift key. So shift north and then 2507, uh, let's say I just wanted to change it by a little bit uh, instead of 0 0.3, let's make it 0 0.8. And if I try to enter that, bam, notice it flashes at me to say, you just made the second blunder of uh, military operations. Uh, the first one obviously being don't start a land war in Asia, but I digress. So it's what it's saying is, hey, I'm not gonna let you change the active steer point. So I'm, I can clear that back out. Now, if I wanted to change a different point, uh, I would have to change the steering here. So let's go back out. We'll change the steering over to um, number two. Let's clear that for a second. Just remember where steer point one is uh, just under there, and I'll show you how that changes. So let's change the steer two. Notice it changes in the, in the HUD over here. And now I can go in and edit steer one because I'm no longer steering to it. So let's change that. Um, actually, let's change steer three or three point uh, that way you can see it, it was over here in the um, uh, steer point. So let's, uh, let me show you where that is, just so you can see it move. So you can see uh, steer three point is just under the uh, altitude box. So we'll change the steering back to steer one, go into the sub menu, we'll make that steer three point. And this allows me to now edit it. So let's put in a different point. So we're gonna go shift north, 25, uh, one, two nine five and notice it changes here on your uh, uf or on the uh, tsd and we'll change the sorry shift east and we're going to put in zero five five zero nine point six and again remember i don't have to put in the decimal for that it's smart smart enough to know that it changes and then if i were to go back out and then steer to steer three point, which is the target. Notice that has now moved from under the little TD box or the altitude box uh, over here. So that's how I can change a point. Um, the other cool thing is I can go into steer three and I can add a point. So notice the last point is steer se uh, six. So let's say I wanted to set steer seven as a uh, uh, Minhad uh, Air Base. Again, I'm in the UAE, so I can set that up. So now I can enter in seven. And then notice it puts in zero zeros uh, and you're gonna have some point long way away. So I'm not really worried about that. So let's say I'm gonna put it in Minhad. So I'm gonna go shift north 2501.4 and then shift east. And again, you do, I will say you, you if it's a, a decimal that's um, like 0, 055 or whatever, you do have to add in the leading zero or it won't know what you're gonna do. So 0, 055, 21.91, bam, and then that will, I'll zoom out and notice it now puts the steer point over here, over Minhad, and that's how I can add a steer point. And I can do this all the way up to steer 99 uh, so I can add points and edit points all day long, and that's how you do the steer point submenu. So that is how you uh, you um, are able to navigate, uh, knowing the nomenclature of the of the different points. 
Uh, one more thing let me show you here is uh, if I go into the steer point, I can also change that target into a regular steer point by just changing it from three point to three. So let me show you that. So notice I put in three with no decimal and then that changes it and notice it changes it to a normal steer point. It also changes the IP uh, because it's no longer a target. So there's obviously no longer an, in, an initial point before I do that. I can ch change it back to a target by putting in the three point and then that changes that to a target and so on. Uh, I can do the same. I can change a steer point to uh, uh, four point. So let's change that and then notice that changes it to a, uh, a target as well. Notice if the target prior to another target, so I could have two targets in a row, it does not change that to an initial point. It says I need it to be a target. So you're just gonna have to figure out that that is also the initial point for four uh, and so on. And then I can just change it back to a normal point and it changes it back to a steer point. So that is, uh, that is the steer point uh, setup. I talked about how you just change the points themselves in terms of navigation. You do that on the main menu. So I can change to uh, six, let's call that, I'm sorry. I, uh, again, uh, I need to put in the six point here. And then notice I uh, am now steering to that. Again, I'm steering to here. And this is where I was gonna talk about the air to ground. So if I go air to ground, it um, you have to do it one more time to, to make it a target. So notice I'm a target point and uh, I'm in seat up mode. If I want to go to the uh, air to ground, uh, I can change the, the mode. So now I've got GB10s and it's an auto and it's giving me all the, uh, the data to that point. So that's a little teaser for some of the air to ground stuff uh, that's gonna come later. So that is it. Hopefully that made sense. And uh, this is not so, I'm out and uh, we'll talk soon. Uh, more stuff upcoming for uh, future tutorials. You guys take care. See you.